Hello, are we all here? I need to make sure that my audio works. Stand by. Waiting. Yes, it does. How are we doing this evening, everyone? I'm Joe Strohsnyder of Joe's Computer Museum. Um, so I have to start with an immediate apology to my scheduled guest host, Petr Puskarich. Um, apparently, he and I had planned for this to happen tomorrow, and then I screwed up and scheduled it for today. So I am working in the background with one or two other people to see if I can get some other guests hopping in for this. Until then, I'm just going to kind of roll with it because the show must go on. Again, apologies for Petter, or to Petter, for, not, not, for me not doing it correctly. Anyway, so this is just a quick little live stream uh, to discuss... Uh, my reverse engineering project for the Apple III keyboard encoder. Now, I've mentioned this encoder a couple different times, um, and I've made a uh, an early demo version of that, or a version one of that, that I've uh, uh, put a few copies out there into the world. Um, but this is the final version, and I wanted to go over some of the um, trials, tribulations, bits, and pieces of how that goes. And if you all hold on for just a second, I have a special guest. <laughs> it's Javier! Hello! Hey, man, how, how you doing? doing? Man? So I asked Javier, like literally with 30 seconds left uh, to go, um, hey, um, can you jump in the stream and like at least be my my sidekick or something? And so I'm not just talking. I mean, I'm talking to all you guests there, but not just talking to myself. And he's like, yeah, um, okay, Joe. Um, I'm joke. How you doing, Javier? <laughs> Even though you had nothing, well, I don't want to say you had nothing to do with this project, but um, you'll you, you'll be, you'll be a stand-in for Petter. So I hope he does not mind, and I hope to schedule something with him in the future. If he wa comes back and watches this, rewatches this, um, um, I apologize. So, how have you been, sir? I'm doing a okay. Good, how good, about you? good. Uh, hanging in there. How's the weather down uh, down south there? Beautiful. Good, good. Hot and humid. Well, it's kind of crappy here today, um, and I'm hoping that. Hey, Tom, uh, I'm hoping that. Uh, yeah, that the uh, this lightning storm that's going to come through isn't going to turn the power off while we're midstream. But since I screwed up the date on the stream, if it cuts us off early, it might be okay. Anyway, so uh, I wanted to talk about this silly little guy right there. Do you uh, do you remember seeing anything about that, Javier, on the Apple Three? Oh hell yeah, I follow it, man. So. What this thing is, it's the uh, Apple III keyboard encoder replacement. And so I wanted to go over a little history about this and to discuss, I don't know, kind of how I approached reverse engineering. Um, I don't know, just to share just to share that process with anybody. So if there's anybody out there who's interested in, in reverse engineering, uh, they kind of have an idea of how, how that works, I guess. So the history goes, uh, Britt Dodd, who's a fellow Ohioan, um, yeah, grandma, <laughs> says it looks like a stick of gum. Uh, never lick the metal bits, by the way. Um, so Britt Dodd, a fellow Ohioan, um, said, uh, basically said, hey, Action Retro, how you doing? Uh, said, hey, I've got these Apple Threes. Do you want to trade? And I trade traded with him some Apple Threes for some Macs that I I no longer wanted. One of which was a Molar Mac, but was taking up a bunch of space. And so I, I traded those. Um, and he's like, I never had time to work on these Apple Threes. They're both broken. They're whatever. If you go back and look up some of my videos, I have a video series, like a two video series, where I fix these Apple Threes. But one of the Apple Threes has a bad keyboard encoder. And the thing about with the Apple Three is that the Apple Three has a uh, it has a custom keyboard encoder chip. It's a variant of the standard general instrument AY5 3600 Pro keyboard chip that's in the Apple II. It's electrically identical, but the mapping is different, meaning you press a key and you get different stuff out based on the key press. So you can't just throw an Apple II encoder in there. What we know in the Apple III community is that these chips 
are effectively unobtainium. They're incredibly hard to find because they were only ever made for the Apple III. And we know that what only 10,000 or 100,000 Apple III's were made and about 90,000 of them are in a landfill. So they're just, they're, they're really hard to get. Add on top of that, then you have the Apple III Plus, which has a slightly different version of that encoder. So there's two of these unobtainium chips. So I set about to make my own version of that chip. And I'll see if I have it right here. I got, yeah, I got it right here. So what I did was I reverse engineered that and came up with a version one of this chip, which is this big thing. It's this big kind of sidecar kind of thing. And that was cool. But then I'm thinking, well, why don't I make the thing universal? Uh, Geek with Social Sills is asking, doesn't the Apple III have an Apple II mode? Um, it does, but it still uses this same chip. It still uses the Apple III chip and does internal software shenanigans to translate that to the Apple II. So you still need that chip. So, oh, <laughs> Petter, just, just so everybody knows, my uh, special guest, Petter, just said, oh, nuts, I'm sorry, I'm out to dinner still out to dinner. Again, my apologies to him. Um, so I needed to make, I, I needed to come up with this, this chip and I, I, I'm kind of waffling back and forth here because I got distracted, but so I had to come through this process to reverse engineer, uh, this chip and I I'm just going to kind of fixing two Two Apple two Apple threes, isn't it? Yeah, I was fixing. Yeah, one. yeah, and one of them was perfectly fine. I plugged it in and turned it on, and it just worked. There was nothing wrong with it. The other one, um, I think mice lived in it or something. It mm -hmm. had bad chips and corrosion all over the place, and it was it was similar to some of the other boards I had to fix. Luckily, I didn't have to do any board level fix, but I had to do a lot of um, chip uh, chip diagnostics and replacements. Well, I knew the machine itself was was good because I took the chip out of the other working one and put it in the broken one and it made the keyboard work. So that's fine. So knowing that this chip was the was an AY5 3600 Pro chip just with a modified key map, I started this process by looking at the data sheet for the AY5 3600. Um, just to see if I could glean any information off of that, how that chip functioned. And the upside is that General Instrument did a really fantastic job of documenting exactly how the chip worked. Um, I'm going to see if I can bring that uh, up on the screen and display that. Doobie, doobie, do. Let me see. Can I change my screen to that? And then I go to that mode. Uh, me mode. Me mode. And so if I scroll on down here. It's uh, hard to see. Can I scroll in? I want to zoom in. There you go. Yeah, so uh, basically right in here, it's like when a match occurs, delay network is enabled, yada, yada, yada. And it, it tells you like this operation uh, section right here is really fantastically good at describing how the chip operates. And then if you... Um, go down here, it has a timing diagram too. So it can tell you this thing has to happen, then this thing has to happen, then this thing has to happen this, in this order. So I was able to deduce that. But going back to, you know, going back to, there we go. How I was going to do that, I was like, well, I, now I've got to, I know this timing and that's fine, but I have to somehow generate an operation that would do that, right? And so I went back to my JCM1 computer. Um, I don't know if any, any of the follow or anybody in the, um, the chat has heard about that. Um, but basically, I made a little 8-bit computer on my own that runs basic and it runs uh, binary programs and it plays music and it does all that stuff. And it's kind of it's in semi-abandonment mode right now because of I got stuck designing the video controller for it, but whatever. But for that, because I wanted to learn how keyboards worked, I designed a keyboard controller for it. So I already had code that was almost identical to the way the AY5-3600 worked because I, spoiler alert, I used the Apple II 
um, reference sheets as a guide on how to build this thing. So I figured if I can get that code running that on that chip, which is a PIC16F18875, it's a little microcontroller. If I can get that code to work the way the uh, the way the AY5 chip does, then I'm like 90% of the way there. And so I play, toyed around with the idea, idea, and then I I got to the point to where I got that working. I started with a kind of a breadboard layout. Let me see if I can. I swear I have these bits and pieces somewhere. Uh, I swear I had it right here, but I'm not seeing it for some reason. But basically, uh, I wired it up on a piece of breadboard with a socket and wires going all over the place. And so, hey, CTR and Adam, how you doing? Jeff, Grandma, Geek with Social Skills, just saying hi to everybody in the chat there. So the trick with uh, getting this chip to work with the Apple II or with the AY5 was that I had to map the pins on the chip to the actual pins in the socket because the power and ground pins were in different places and all of that stuff. So I created a little adapter board which you know is what that that this board here is that wires all those lines from the chip to where they're supposed to go, right? Coded that up, threw it in there, and it worked basically. But it wasn't really that straightforward because this chip for the Apple III was undocumented. Um. And that was really the trick with this. So I I could build this, this, this encoder to scan the keyboard matrix and output bits bits on onto the onto the um on the Apple III and make it work. But I was having some problems with that. Primarily, the Apple III is not documented. <laughs> so I didn't really know what the encoder chip was supposed to do compared to what the default uh, skip or the um, the 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 data sheet for the AY5 said it was supposed to do. Hello from Panama. Thanks. If you hear beeping in the background just now, that's my battery backup uh, for my servers and my network over here. I need a new battery for it. It'll shut up in about sixty seconds. I apologize if you hear beeping. Um, so. Because that wasn't documented, I had to go about documenting how this thing actually worked, right? There were two things I had to figure out as far as that documentation. One is the actual key matrix itself for the uh, for the keyboard. Luckily, somebody um, whose name I don't remember off the top of my head has already done that work. They... Uh, have mapped the yes thank you geek with social skills apple 3 encoder is now documented thanks for my work um it's not all me um my guest that was supposed to be here petter helped me a lot on the apple 2 plus or apple 3 plus side but anyway um somebody had already documented the keyboard matrix for the apple 2e for the apple 3 and the apple 3 plus thank god that beeping stopped <laughs> which was so I didn't have to manually map the keyboard out. Unfortunately, I found that out after I had already mapped the keyboard out, so I already did it anyway, but whatever. You know, misery loves company. But the, the main part of it was I did not know what the Apple III keyboard encoder itself actually spit out when you pressed a key. So let's go into that a little bit. The, the the yeah and the beeping noise. Hi, Michael. How you doing? Um, the Apple the the encoder on the Apple II, the default AY5 3600 Pro, has a simple key matrix of ten lines by nine lines. It's just a cross matrix, and when the two cross, it outputs a code based on that intersection. And the codes that are, it put out or it puts out are in a simple, straightforward. Um, yeah, that was Joe's beeper going off. Yes, it was. It's in a simple, straightforward. Um, sequential binary sequential order 
zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. It's not in it's not in uh, ASCII or anything like that. It's just the intersections are in order and it spits out a binary number. And in the Apple II, if you look very carefully, and I think you're asking me about that, weren't you just asking me about that a few minutes ago, Javier? Yep. You need a keyboard encoder ROM to convert the code that comes out of the encoder into something the Apple II can use. Um, there's another computer that uses that too called the Super Brain. It uses the exact same chip and it does the same process. It takes that code, interprets it, and to use it to something it needs. However, the Apple III is different. The Apple III. They went, uh, Apple went directly to General Instrument and said, hey, can you burn us a custom ROM version of this chip? So it does not put out the default codes. It puts out ASCII codes. If it, if it detects that you've hit the button that's in, at the intersection where A is supposed to be on the keyboard, it'll output an ASCII A. So we have to, I had to figure that entire process out and create an, a key intersection by key intersection mapping. So that's 90 times four. What's nine times four? 36. Hey, AY5 3600. That's where the 3600 comes from. I had to create a 360 or 3600 bit map of all those ASCII characters to every single one of those keys from scratch. And I did that by connecting up a good old fashioned logic analyzer to the chip while the machine was on. And then I started pressing keys on the keyboard. And that's how I was able to look at the bits that were coming out of the encoder and say, oh, when I press A, I get six five, that's an A. Okay, so it's 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 ASCII. So for the ASCII ca characters, it was easy enough to figure out. But on the Apple III, there are, you know, you've got shifted characters, you've got like minuses and pluses and equals and other things that are in weird spots that might not be ASCII. Um, you have to deal with the control characters. You have to deal with lots of lots of these other things. So I put in a basic key pattern and I tested it. And it mostly worked. But the dealer diagnostics was failing. So I had then had to go through, okay, so when I press enter on the numeric keypad, it does something different. It, it, make, it makes it think like the control button is pressed while you're hitting enter and little bit patterns like that. So I ended up figuring out all those bit patterns, throwing it in there, and it just worked. So, you know, that's the basic process. Um, it's hard to describe that process in depth with any specificity. Um, without like going like to total ham and nerd on that. But uh, I wanted to at least try to attempt to to discuss that process uh, henceforth and forthwith. Um, I will, 90, nine times four equals 36, thanks. Um, so questions, uh, comments, thoughts. Uh, does anybody have any uh, questions on how I got to, uh, got to where I am in this process um, right now. Put your, put your, put your co questions in the comments and we'll, we'll answer your questions. Um, questions from you, Javier, about that process. No, no. Are I'm you Mr. Shy? What's that? <laughs> I know nothing. Oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically it was a, it was, it, to synopsize, it was step-by-step -step process. It was identifying the problem uh, and attacking the problem with different resources that I had, had available at my disposal. I needed to understand how the chip itself functioned, and I did that two ways, by analyzing the data sheet and then analyzing how the chip actually worked in circuit using a logic analyzer, and then using <laughs> plans for ASCII to abdict version. Um, no. <laughs> And then applied the applied that to, to with things I learned uh, with with building the, my own keyboard to make that work. Yes, Javier knows how to retrowrite. So Javier, can you make that? Can you can you turn that from green? I to can light? make it shiny. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, questions. Uh, what do we have? When will it be available? Geek with social skills. Yes. Yeah, so if you go to jcm onecom it's available now. As a matter of fact. Um, um, oh, I had it. Yes. As a matter of fact, the parts came in from Mouser today for me to start building those. It's all here. So if you want one, go order one. 
Um, so the Apple III encoder is different than the Apple II and Apple IIe. Yes, uh, Adam, very good question. So the encoder and the Apple II, um, the Apple II and the Apple II Plus have actually many different encoders depending on the keyboard that's in the machine and all of that. So on the Apple II uh, and Apple II Plus, the keyboard includes the encoder on the keyboard itself. And that chip was changed based on who manufactured the keyboard. And it just spit out ASCII to the Apple II, which then dealt with it. On the Apple IIe, they used the generic keyboard controller and they were able to specify to the manufacturer, this is the keyboard matrix you have to make the keyboard on in order for our keyboard controller to work. Um, and then after that, the three is different from that. The Apple III uses the same concept as the Apple II as far, or the Apple IIe, I should say, as the way it operates, but it uses a specialized version of that encoder so that Apple could eliminate the ROM chip. Um, and in, when you think about it in the Apple IIe, or not the Apple IIe, sorry, I, I get confused easily. On the Apple III, they didn't need that ROM chip because the Apple III was designed as a business computer yeah. to be, um, uh, to have the language remappable. So you needed to have the keyboard to be remappable. So a lot of that's handled in software. So they figured if we eliminate the ROM chip and we just make the, the, the keyboard encoder has spit out codes, we can then interpret what those codes are and convert it with software drivers and all of this other stuff. So that's basically, that That basically, I hope answers your question, uh, Adam. Um, you have several two plus keyboards with bad encoder chips. Yes, the encoder chip on the two plus, it, it is very, very similar to the AY53600 chip, but is quite a bit different. It, it's, it, it's functionality is, is, is the same. Um, if you want to do that, if you if you need a replacement encoder or uh, board for your Apple II Plus or your Apple II, I would suggest uh, going to, um, uh, gosh, what's his name? Henry. 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 Um, Reactive Micro. Reactive Micro. Thank you, Javier. See, you did help. Thank you. I got for something. Yay. He sells the super encoder uh, boards that are specifically designed to work with the Apple II and Apple II Plus keyboards. Um, On to the details of this chip here. So after I got the Apple III encoding working, I decided it would be super easy to add Apple II functionality to it. So in the first run of the board, which you can, I still have like five of these left. So if you want a little bit of a discount, you don't have an Apple II Plus or Apple III Plus, you can buy one of these and get a discount. Um, three cheers for what's his name? Yes. Uh, the, the so on the first version of the board, I figured it would be super easy to add Apple II function or Apple IIe functionality to that. So I did, and that that was there. Um, when I decided to make this second revision come around. I wanted to make it universal. I wanted to also make it, as you can see, it is chip sized compared to this big fat board. Yeah. Chip sized. This thing will literally fit directly in the socket of anything that takes that original chip. Anything. This yeah. will fit in an Apple IIc. If you order this on my website uh, with the Apple II uh, and select the Apple IIc option, I will make it without these pins on it. So it's low profile and it'll fully fit underneath the keyboard without touching anything. It'll fit underneath the keyboard and underneath any memory boards or anything you have in there. So it'll just work. So um, that you know that covers that universality. It works in a in a two e, in a two c, in a three, and in a three plus. Now I wanted to talk about the Apple three plus specifically. And this is why, uh, primarily, I wanted Petter to be on here because he 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 greatly helped me um, diagnose the Apple III uh, Plus side. So on the Apple III Plus, I don't own a III Plus, but I'm a stickler for quality. I had the keyboard encoding mapping for the Apple III Plus because somebody who's I don't have their name created created the matrix. They wrote down the entire matrix for the Apple III Plus, so I was able to just write write up the key mapping. And I knew it would be correct, but I wanted to flipping test the thing before I sent this out into the world. And so I went on the onto the uh, Apple III enthusiasts page on Facebook. I'm like, hey, does anybody out there have an Apple III Plus that knows a little bit of electronics and is willing to help me test this, this encoder? 
And Patter's like, yeah, I can do that. And the upside is the guy knows his stuff. He knows how to program chips and do stuff with Raspberry Pis and all of that stuff. So I sent him a test board. Hey, Mac84, it's Steve! Eep! Um, so I sent the board out to him, and he gets the board, and he goes to test it. And I told him, hey, the mapping for the Apple 3 Plus should be perfect. It should be. But test it for me anyway. And he tests it as a jacked up mess because I screwed up. I got the mapping incorrect. So we had to work with him to find a way, me in Ohio, and him in Texas, for me to send him compiled code for him to stick this in some sort of adaptery dongly thing <laughs> to program it. This uses a PIC 16F 18875 chip. And of course, it, this is using the tiny chip. Um, so you can't just throw it in a programmer. You have to throw it in a programmer that has a little adapter like this that I made for programming it in my programmer, which is this. Oh, I can't see it on screen and I can't unplug the USB because it'll break everything. That thing right there, right? But he doesn't have that because he doesn't program these chips. He doesn't have any way of, of encoding that. So we work together and I'm like, hey, what do you need to program this thing? And he's like, well, I need to know what pins that you use to program it and what the chip is. And so between him and I, and it was mostly him, I have to give him an insane amount of credit. I basically just told him the chip type and what the, the pins are I have mapped on here to be able to program it in circuit. And he basically figured out everything else. So it was like, if I use this and I use that and I use this and I use that, we can do it. So we worked back and forth for over a couple of nights and figured out he was able to get a, uh, a Raspberry Pi with a GPIO breakout board into a breadboard using a program. Uh, it's a Unix or a Linux program called Pickle that allows you to program pick chips. And then he went out on the internet and found the, um, the proper encoding process for the 16F18875, loaded that into the application. And he's like, Joe, send me the ROM. So I or send me the code. I sent him the code. And he's like, yep, it worked. And, and about 20 minutes after that, because it was easy after that point, we got it up and working. He did a full test. He tested it for a couple of days, came back to me, said, Joe, it's perfect. You're gold. It's good to go. I'm like, yeah, awesome. So with that craziness, and this is why stepping back, this is why I wanted him on this stream one, so he could get the credit he deserves for doing that. But also, yeah, acid rain. Can we have an FPGA SSI 263 chip? That's very funny. Javier, weren't you and I talking about that a few weeks ago, making a version of that? So um, that's in my head, guys. I may or may not ever get to doing that, but I have a long way to go before I can do that. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Um, I really wanted him here because I wanted him to be able to get the credit for he, de he deserves and for him to show his setup, to show all the bits and pieces that he put together, how he connected it all together, the program, program that he used, all of that stuff to get that thing to work. Um, so, you know, uh, thanks to him in absentia. Um, for going through that process to make that thing work. So it was, yeah, it's been, it's been a thing. Who are you laughing at, Javier? They say that I look like Stanley Tucci. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know who he was, but I, I've seen it in a lot of movies. Yeah, he's good. Hey, hey, hey you know, you, you got to take your compliments where you can get it, right? Um, other questions and hellos. Action Retro says hi. Dave's Dr. Dave's Diversion says hi. Yes. Uh, Peter, uh, Petter, sorry, I always mispronounce his name. He's it's a very interesting right. name. Petter helped him burn, helped Adam burn some ROMs. Yes, he's a, he's a great guy. He's like super helpful. He's like, can you help me? He's like, yes, yesterday. Um, he's an awesome guy. And so, yeah, um, my Apple IIe has a fill. Oh, acid rain. Are you telling your Apple IIe to say naughty words? Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically... Uh, the reverse engineering process with that chip. So after having done all of that and gone through several revisions, man, I've got so many revisions. I've got those and I'm really looking, ah, here they are. I found them. I knew they were on my bench. 
this is what I wanted to get. I wanted to get my very, very first version out here. So, yeah, there was one of the very first revisions. It's got a it's got a decoupling capacitor there that it didn't up, end up needing, and it's got extra pins that I didn't end up using. Um, I had made during the process. I made this stupid little rig so I could program those tiny little chips out of circuit. But then I realized if I rerouted the lines a little bit and made an adapter, I'd be able to program them in circuit so I could just build it, then program it with a blank chip to make the whole process easier. So, um, but yeah, it, it was a crazy process. It's been about a year, eight months going through that through several different revisions on the background to get that to work. So it's been super, super fun process. 25 people watching. Wow. That's crazy. Is, is what I have to say really that interesting? Um, hi from Southern California. Hey, TJ. Random question. Has any ever made a modern version of the super serial card? That's a really good question. Um, I haven't seen a clone of that. Have you Javier? Because no. they're, they're clones of the original anyway. Every Apple IIe after about 1984 came with one. When you bought it, you pretty much just got one in it. Um, so Maybe Brazilians have one. Yeah, they're just there's hundreds of clones out there. They're not rare at all. You can pick them up on eBay for what 15 or 20 bucks sometimes, or just ask around the Apple II community. And people like me have like 87 of them, just like stacked back here in the back, and just like yeah, handing them out like Russic and flutes in Star Trek: The Next Generation. That's a deep cut reference. If anybody knows that reference, so yeah. Um, gee, why do people start streaming at 2 a.m.? Hi from France and good night. Bye, Francois. <laughs> um but uh but yeah so no not not there's not there aren't a lot of clones of the the uh super serial card they're a dime a dozen um there are some other cards that i'm working on cloning as well but i don't want to get into too many details about that because i'm saving those for future live streams so yeah um this is kind of just like the beginning of my entire reverse engineering process so sorry with this chip i started with a hard one uh, relatively speaking, to to do that process. Um, usually when you start with reverse engineering, you start with copying, basically, a board. Um, like, for example, something like this. You start with a board, you take the board apart, and you copy the board. Uh, I dropped an LED on the floor there. Uh, because it's easy, because you can throw that into an application. You just draw over the traces, and you're done. Um, but I started the hard way and decided to uh, copy a chip so you know it is what it is um picard's flute the resican flute yeah see action retro got it sean got the reference yeah <laughs> we had this we had this thing going on where i worked um when anybody ever gave out gift cards they would call it a resican flute and we'd say it's a bit it's about as popular as picard's resican flutes and anyway so nerd reference. the iron card clone is, is going to be a difficult one because it has it i think a specific chip isn't it yeah, yeah, I believe it does. Um, and a, and a IO and um, was machine. It's got uh, an IWM, IWM on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, see, the IWM is another one of those chips where, because the IWM is effectively a disk two controller, with enough, how can I say, chutzpah, one could probably reverse engineer that fairly easily. And I'm throwing that in air quotes because you have the original disc two controller as a reference. So you know how it's supposed to function and you also have the chip. So if you've got like an Apple two C it's just in there in a socket, mm -hmm. you can probe it directly again with a logic probe and see what it's trying to do when it's trying to do certain things and get an understanding of that state machine. Right. But, eh. Javier is echoing. I'll bet you you're echoing probably because I have my speakers up too high. But oh, I muted myself anyway. Yeah, and Adam, yeah, he just said Big Messes Wires is working on something similar. And that's what I was going to mention. He's working on that Yellowstone card. He's basically doing that reverse engineering process for the, for the I think it's for the Lyron, but basically it's going to be a universal card that does um, smart port block devices and floppy devices. So, yeah. 
Kai Robinson, the guy who's uh, working on the SE Logic Board. Yes, SE Logic Board. Want one. Missed. I and want. Want. I want one of those. Anyway. Um, yeah, reverse engineering on the swim and some other custom Mac chips. Yeah, and it, we're talking about reverse engineering, let's go down that you know down that rabbit hole. Absolutely, um, because the SE Logic board, we, even though we have the board, we don't have all the chips. So a lot of the chips are Jelly Bean. A lot of the chips you can still get, and a lot of the chips you're just going to have to rely on old stock, like the processor. The two, Motorola isn't making those things anymore. Um, but you don't have the swim. You don't have some of these custom um, two port memory chips like are used uh, for the for the video side and stuff like that. So, yeah, you can order Kai's board. See, and I know I can order his board, Steve, but 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 I just forgot. I have a lot of other things going on right now. Is he doing I'm an SC30 crazy, also, so. or just SC30? Is there an HDMI mod for the Apple II? Actually, yes, there is. There's, there are like a quadrillion of those, uh, depending on how you want to do it. Um, you can, uh, there's the vid, two, there, the, is it the vid HD? Is that what it's called? I'm not or, I'm not sure if you can still get those. I think he's paused you production can, he's, on those. He's behind. You're yeah. muted. I can't hear you, man. I unmute myself. Can you hear me? Wait, you're not muted. I you have my speakers down, so you won't echo. <laughs> um, what was that? That um, uh, VidHD is, is back ordered. Yeah, it's, it's still making them. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you can do the VidHD. Um, you, there's lots of uh, Javier, not Javier, um, Henry of Re Reactive Micro has an adapter that does an insanely good job at converting mm -hmm. the composite output to HDMI. Mm -hmm. um, he also has a monitor he worked with the Chinese manufacturer to tweak a lot of the settings on, which if you look in the background mm -hmm. of my videos, it's right over there. I use that as my bench monitor. Yeah. That thing has the insanely clearest video. Yeah. You just plug it into, into um, composite and it looks perfect. It's crazy. Um, there's the retro tink. You can use that. Um, the retro tink will take composite and convert it to HDMI, and then you can plug it into it, any device you want. Um, I found that the 2X is mm, not that great, um, but maybe the 5X will do a better job at, do, at that conversion. We'll see. So the echo makes you sound authoritative, authoritative, Dr. Yes, Davis, I so, am. So. Um, um, um. <laughs> I'm going to actually, if you want to hang on for a second, I'll see if I can fix this out. Ah! Yes, I am. Um, mute. Um, there, I just caused it. insane a lot because I have it running in the background and it was mute. Uh, <laughs> live streamer, I am not. Stand by. Change my speakers here. There we go. Hopefully, the echo should be gone now. Let me speak and see if it's true. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the retro tank works really well, uh, but it's it's fuzzy. It when you think about it, the retro tank it almost seems to me like it's trying to um, emulate the original television look on a CRT. Which if that's what you want, okay, that's fine. But you know, I don't know. Uh, old pigeon is saying, "I got the VGA adapter from A2 Heaven. Suck it on my RAM works. I have the same card. It works really well. Super good." Um, getting a cheap four by three LCD TV. Yeah, you can do that. Um, I sound smart. That's awesome, <laughs> man. I'm here for the looks only, not for the brain. <laughs> hey, Javier. Javier is smart. That guy has totally knocked out of the park the <laughs> the proper process to retrobrite without killing your stuff. So always. I mean, you know. Um, other questions. I'll show you one thing. Don't see any other big questions at the moment. So, this is what happens when you retrobrite bad something. <laughs> That's when you put it on nuclear, it goes all black, right? <laughs> that thing is awesome looking, by the way. That is the. It was so badly retrobrite that I yeah. had to do something. Oh, is that what it was? It was it was ruined. So that's why you did that. I didn't. I wasn't born knowing everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, was it a re, your retrobrite failure, or really? 
Yeah, a long time ago, and I just put it on the side. Okay. When I begin to do my retro ride, I, I messed up. That's why I tell people, don't mess up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I have a video out a couple uh, couple months ago where I screwed up the retro brighting on a Commodore 64. I left it in uh, too long and it got all frosty. Um, but I have a plan to, at some point in the future, um, polish it with multiple grips of uh, plastic polish until it's uh, 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 perfectly shiny. No but shirts. I don't know if that'll no happen. 8-bit shirts. Yes. Go get a shirt from Javier, 8bittees.com. Um, so yeah, you forgot to add the stuff that wrecks the surface of the plastic. There you go. Um, do you want to? I forgot what I was going to ask. Never mind. <laughs> That's just how I am. I forgot. welcome to Alzheimer. She's I man. You know, you know this gray hair. This what's left of my gray hair. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the more paint you apply, the more likely the color will match. <laughs> I used to do these. Hey, man, Kate Poppies, good morning to you. It's uh, evening here tonight, but that's okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to share that with everybody and that uh, those things are available now. So, you know, you can get one of these on jcm-1.com. Um, there should be a link in the description. There might not be, but jcm-1.com. I'll put a link in the chat here in a minute. And so if you've got an Apple IIe, an Apple IIc, an Apple IIc Plus, an Apple III, or an Apple III Plus with a busted, broken keyboard controller. And I'll add, you're sure it's the controller. And I'll talk about that in a moment. This will fix all of them. If you have any computer, any device out there at all that uses an AY5 3600 Pro, or its common equivalent, the KR9600 Pro, this will do the same thing. It will replace that chip. It's universal. It works on all of them. So I'm hoping to maybe expand that knowledge out beyond just the Apple II community because there have got to be other machines out there that use that chip. General Instrument did not create that chip just for Apple. You know, they had to have had a market out there to design that chip. So there's, and I, I know, <laughs> will that work on your M1 Mac if you throw it at it really hard, maybe? Um, there's got to be a market out there. Uh, the super brains are are the only other computer I could find over the past couple of days of doing searches that use it. But there got to be other machines out there that do that. Yeah, yeah, burp. Yeah, see, uh, see, you you got that right. See, I just had um, a cup of coffee and some pudding for dessert, so I'm a little verklempt. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, so that chip is available. I'm gonna put that link in the description. Doodly do. Stand by. One dash one dot com. And again, apologies for not being better. It would be <laughs> more. <laughs> That's fine. A That's lot fine. more interesting, of course. That's fine. At least I had a wingman or so somebody here to, to talk to um, <laughs> with this process. But yeah. So, uh, any other thoughts, questions, comments? Anything from you, Javier? Anything from from the the chatters in the chat, the watchers in the in in the chat list about what's going on. I just love that we are doing these kind of things, man. I I'm in contact with other groups of other computers, not as cool, <laughs> in other places in the world, and mm -hmm. you know, they always trying to do new things, and some of them do a lot of software, and, yeah. and sometimes I get a little bit jealous, and I say, oh, we should do more of this, and and that's what I'm trying to encourage, mm -hmm. you know, when they do a. a a new game, I try to buy it and like mm -hmm. you, you're, you're cheap, you know, get one, you know, encourage people to do more things, man. You know, sure, sure, you absolutely. To, Shouldn't you two be now. six feet apart? He's in Florida and I'm in Ohio. I think we're 600,000 feet apart, but okay. Um, oh, this is it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, no, it's fine. Um, so yeah, yeah, I agree. There, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of projects out there right now to reverse engineer different things. Hey, you can buy shirts on my website too, Sean, by the way. Yes. For example. Yeah, his shirts are cool. You can and get this nice eight bits are all you need t-shirt. Of course, I'm wearing one of Javier's today, you know, so, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really cool that, that, 
we have a lot of, and it's not just the games, like Nox Archaeus is the big, huge thing, right? It's also, we've got the hardware stuff too, to try to, like what Kai is doing, this chip that I built to try to reverse engineer that thing. Um, I have a couple other reverse engineering projects that I can't talk about yet right now because I have a kind of NDA going on. Um, and another one I'll be uh, on another live stream about this time next week with another group of people that I'm going to be talking about too. Uh, th these reverse engineering projects allow us to keep the passion alive for these things, keep the systems working, especially for these hard to get on Obtainium products. You yeah. know, you're not going to find a keyboard encoder. You're not going to find a new SE board if you're SE. Dot, just it's you need these things, right? Yeah, I'm actually looking for IWMs too. Yeah, I got two two Cs without IWMs and mm -hmm. hard to get. And that's and that's that's another uh, big thing is reverse engineering just that chip. Mm -hmm. I mean, this form factor would be perfect for it. Mm -hmm. It's going to require something a lot smarter than the chip I used here. That's probably going to require like an ARM Cortex or something with some real horsepower to do it. Mm -hmm. Almost kind of like um, what the, the chip that that's in the um, the applesauce to be able to have the speed. You know that 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 sixty four megahertz chip or whatever it is that does whatever it does. Yeah. So, you know, call Waz and ask him for. That's the what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, other questions, thoughts, comments? Yes. Don't feed your floppy disk to a crocodile. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yes. Yes, old pigeon. Yeah, we talked about that before. Yeah, I, I think Kai might be working on that to uh, reverse engineer the the swim. So yeah, um, if you want other thing, other cool things, you can get one of these and uh, build it yourself. Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can uh, get the three D printed version and all of that stuff. So yeah at jcm-1.com. Lots of cool t-shirts. You can get cool mugs, like my drinking mug, the mug that's on it that's, that has this this the colors of the um, print shop thinking printing. thing while it's printing, but it says drinking. You know, you can get that. But yeah, light bright, exactly. I wanted to make one of those, uh, one of those that allow you to change the LEDs like a light bright, but it would have been too expensive to do, so I didn't do that, but yeah. Yeah, there are things that are different, very expensive to make. That's the only problem. Yeah, yeah I had to I had to <clears throat> tons of resistors and all of that stuff. And Justin, hey, how you doing? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been a process to do this to do this project, but I really am glad that I was able to um, actually make the thing happen and get it out there into the world and get it to where people can can order those and get their Apple II or their Apple threes fixed. Ah, there was one thing I did want to discuss on this before anybody goes out and just randomly buys one because they have a busted keyboard in their Apple three. I would suggest if possible, before you get one of these, yes, I'm underselling myself, but I want to make sure people get what they need before purchasing one of my replacement chips. If you happen to have another Apple three, that you can swap the keyboard chip from and test that first because the Apple three has a lot more involved in its keyboard circuit than just this encoder that can cause things that make it seem like the encoder is bad. Mm -hmm. There are flip flops and bus transceivers and things like that, that couple the keystrokes onto the Apple's data bus that if those are bad, it'll seem like the keyboard controller is bad when it's not. So I'd hate to sell you one of these chips and then have you not need the chip, right? So that's that's a, that's a little word of advice there. If you're curious about that process, uh, if you go to jcm-1.com and go to the contact us page and want to ask me questions, you can ask me questions there. If you know I'm on uh, where how to get a hold of me on Facebook. You can ask me questions there. I also have my tag right here, Museum Joe on Twitter. You can send me a, a direct message on Twitter there if you want to get a hold of me there. Um, if you have questions about diagnosing that um, to make sure your keyboard encoder actually is the problem before doing that, we can we can help you out with that. But um, 
But yeah, but if you're sure your keyboard encoder is bad and you don't want to try to do an eBay search or steal one from a working uh, three or three plus just to make yours work, because that one already works, why steal the chip from it? You know, this is going to be this is going to be the solution to solve that problem. So, uh, Old Pigeon asks, "Who's going to be the first to make a 281 by 192 LED array connected to their Apple II?" I've I've thought about it. I have thought about it. As a matter of fact, hold on just a second. That's the funny thing. He has everything. <laughs> All you need are some of those. Stick them in a big panel, big array, and then a really, really, really fast Arduino style thing to send send the bits to it. And it would do it because they already have huge controllers. These are those NeoPixel strips, but this is a you know one of those arrays. They already have um, pre-made con controllers, but pre-made um, projects for Arduinos for the higher end Ardu Arduinos with horsepower. Hey, Coop. Um, where you can actually send VGA to these. So all you'd have to do is wire this up to that thing, then plug it into your Apple II, and you'd have this gigantic, <laughs> this gigantic Apple II screen. But yeah, all you need is eight bits. Yes, eight bits are all you need. Stand by. I just had an explosion of stuff all over my uh, my desk here. There it is. Yes. Eight bits are all you need. Grab your eight bits all your all you need sticker, jcm-one.com. Free shipping. So yeah. Yep. Yep, a doodles. Well, uh, you know, I didn't have a, a lot more to say on that subject. I'm really uh, we're coming up on a on one hour. I think that's a nice run for a midweek stream. So I don't want to you know waste everybody's time on this wonderful this wonderful Wednesday evening. But uh, I wanted to uh, again thank Javier for jumping at the last minute and being my my wingman and co-host for this live stream episode. I wanted to thank again Petter for all of the fantastic he work he did with me over three nights to get the uh, plus version of this to work. I could not have done that without him. Uh, so yeah, super grow, props yeah. to him. Um, and thanks to absolutely everybody in the chat who threw their comments uh, at us. So we had some, some stuff to ask and answer. And everybody who watched, thank you for, for coming by and watching the stream. Again, final shameless plug, keyboard controller, universal, Apple IIe, Apple IIc, Apple III, jcm-1.com. Go and get one today. I have 28 of them in stock, and I can reorder these odd infinite items. So you keep you keep having a demand for them, I'll keep making them. That's all I had. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Thanks, Holly Bear. And Thanks, everybody. See you all later. Have a good evening. Bye. <laughs>